Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the RockPi X from Radza. This is a low-cost Raspberry Pi form factor single board computer with an x86-64 processor, so it's capable of running Windows 10 and mainstream x86 based Linux distributions. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our very exciting brown cardboard box which I purchased from Allnet and which contains a RockPi X as well as a required heatsink. So let's open it up, let's bring in the stand of a knife just to cut through uh, the tape down there and we can get straight inside, here we are. And uh, oh yes, I can see we've got, ah uh, oh, that clearly is a uh, antenna. Antenna as well. This is the uh, the board. This will be the heatsink. I'm certain. But let's go to the board itself and get into the board. I can see a familiar bit of Radsa tape on here. Or oh, we'll use standing and nice that as well. Getting in there, and hopefully in a second we will get inside. And ah yes, it says Rock Pi X. We've got the right board, and there we are. What a smart looking single board computer. Very, very exciting indeed. And it's worth pointing out that the RockPi X comes in various models with either 1, 2 or 4 gigabytes of RAM and either 8, 16, 32, 64 or 128 gigabytes of onboard flash storage, with prices ranging from $49 for the 1 gigabyte, 16 gigabyte model up to $99 for the 4 gigabyte, 128 gigabyte board. And here, if you're wondering what I've got, is a 4GB RAM board with 32GB of EMMC flash storage on the board, and this cost me $75. And then the heatsink over here, still in its exciting crinkly bag, that cost an extra $7.99. And then together with shipping, it means I paid a grand total of $95.67 to have this sent to me in the UK, which was uh, £73.35 delivered, if you wish to know. So, with all that out of the way, I think first of all, we should compare this board to some other single board computers. So, let's start out by putting it down over here next to a Raspberry Pi 4. So, there we are, the Rock Pi X next to the Raspberry Pi 4. We can see they clearly have got exactly the same form factor. The uh, Raspberry Pi 4 here, which is a 4 gigabyte model, this costs $55 compared to uh, $75 for this 4 gigabyte Rock Pi X. But of course, the Rock Pi X has got onboard flash storage. And really the boards I want to compare this to more than the Raspberry Pi are these boards over here. So let's put the Rock Pi X down in the middle like that. And what we have here are your choices if you want to buy an x86 based single board computer for less than $100. And specifically over here we have a Latte Panda version 1.0 2 gigabyte RAM, 32 gigabyte onboard storage model, which costs $89 from DF Robot. And then over here we've got an Atomic Pi, which has got 2 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of onboard flash storage. And this is a rather strange board because it was never manufactured to be a single board computer. It was made to be a robot control board, the robot project got cancelled, the boards got remainder, they got sold off and rebranded as the Atomic Pi, which initially sold for $34, and today you can still buy an Atomic Pi if you're lucky for $39.95 from, for example, Meridroid, although I think the supplies are getting very limited. And it's worth noting that all three of these boards are based on the same processor, which is an Intel Atom X5 Z8350, that's a 64-bit quad-core CPU, and it's a chip from 2016. And I mention this because when I said on the channel a few weeks ago, oh, I'm going to be looking at the uh, Rock Pi X, I think it's a fantastic new board, some people said, no it isn't, it's based on a 2016 chip. And I'd say two things about that. One is, there's nothing wrong with chips from 2016. Many people today in the world are using PCs with far older CPUs than four years. And secondly, you have to make compromises if you want to make and you want to buy a single board computer with an x86 processor for less than $100, and the compromise is a slightly older chip. So with that point made, let's look in a bit more detail at the specification, the hardware of the RockPi X. Right, 
Here we have the Rock Pi X, which, as I've already noted, is based on a quad-core Intel Atom Z8350 CPU, which is a 1.44 GHz base frequency bursting to 1.92 GHz. And if you're wondering where is the processor, it is uh, under the board, under here, there it is, that shiny thing there is the uh, Atom chip, sitting next to our two memory chips here, providing here our four gigabytes of RAM, which is 1866 MHz low power DDR3. And also here on the base of the board, we can see our EMMC flash memory module here, 32 gigabytes of uh, onboard flash storage. And alongside the EMMC chip is a micro SD card slot, which supports cards up to 128 gigabytes in size, as well as a display connector supporting an LCD display. And then at the other end of the base of the board, we find a real-time clock battery connector, and then next to that, a USB 3 OTG switch. And so that's it for the base of the board. We've seen all we can over here. So let's flick things back the right way up, stop the board being disoriented. And if we now turn to the first short edge, we find gigabit ethernet, and we find four type A USB ports. And as you can see, three of these ports are USB 2 and one is USB 3. And it's a shame we've only got one USB 3 port, but at least we've got one USB 3 port. Rotating around, we find a 3.5 millimeter jack offering stereo audio output and a microphone input, and which appears to be gold plated. And then at the other end of this edge, we find a USB-C connector, which is used to power the board. In the middle of these two jacks, we then find this, a full-size HDMI connector. Always good to see a full-size HDMI connector. And according to the specs on the Radsa Wiki, this supports 4K output at up to 30 frames a second. However, I'm skeptical of this claim as the Intel specification to an Atom Z8350 state that the maximum HDMI resolution is 1920 by 1080. And that's what I expect from this board. And indeed, Radsa do label the board as having Intel Gen 8 HD graphics. And there's a bit of a clue there in the name of those HD graphics. Spending 90 again, we find one of those tiny little wireless antenna connectors. And then next to that, there is a power switch. Next to that, nestling down here somewhere, we find a couple of LEDs, a status LED and a power LED. And then finally on the end, there is a connector for an external power switch in case you want to turn the board on without having to press the little switch down here. Finally, on the last long edge, we find a color-coded 40-pin GPIO connector, and then lurking behind it at one end, there is the wireless module, which offers 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2. And at the other end of the GPIO connector, down here, we've got a four pin power over ethernet header. And so there we are, the Rock Pi X, a rather nifty x86 based single board computer with a Raspberry Pi form factor. Now, just before we try this board out, we need to turn our attention to its heatsink. So let's uh, open this thing up in this little crinkly bag here. We've got a very large piece of metal and also some mounting hardware. And we've got some heatsink compound here. It's good to see this is going on with thermal paste, not using a, a thermal pad. And just bring the two in together. You can see this obviously is the same size as the board. Roughly it goes in on the underside. Got it the wrong way around there. These two things will uh, go together. So we've got a heatsink on the uh, CPU and the memory, something like that. So I think I'll put this together using the magic of filmmaking. And there we are. It's gone together very well indeed. This really is a very nice uh, construction. And the final thing I need to mention is a power supply to power the board. And the power supply is going to be this. This is the Radsa USB-C power supply. They do recommend that you use a power supply but doesn't just provide five volts. And this power supply provides five volts at three amps, nine volts at two amps, and 12 volts at one amp. So it'll be a, a good power supply to power the, uh, the Rock Pi X. So uh, there we are. I think we're now all ready to test this board out. Greetings, here I am back again and as you can see, I've got the Rock Pi X all connected up and running. And indeed, we're running 
Windows 10. Here we are running Windows 10 on the, the Rock Pi X, and it works perfectly well. A little bit sluggish here and there, but it certainly works. And it was a very straightforward install. The Rock Pi X has a standard BIOS, so you can just go into the BIOS on boot and then go along and find a boot override, as I did here. Boot from a USB drive with a Windows install on it, and you end up with a Windows 10. And admittedly, I've spent about seven or eight hours today going through the whole process of installing Windows 10 and doing all the Windows 10 updates. Don't we get a lot of those these days, getting all the drivers working, but everything is now working absolutely fine. And uh, let's just run something like, I don't know, the 3D viewer to show you the things do work on this machine. Let's run that up. As I say, a little bit sluggish running things up, but it does work. Hopefully we'll get to the uh, wonderful 3DB in a second. Come on, give us the 3DB. Oh, it's coming in over here. I always find this is a good uh, test. I like animation two here, and uh, there we are. We've got the, uh, the flying bee. So as you can see, the Rock Pi X has got a little bit of a power to generate things like that. And we'll also nip to the internet, or we've got to go to the internet, or look, we're going to visit the world's favorite website. That seems to be working. We can check out single wall computers, things like that. All the friends of the, the Rock Pi X. And I'm sure you want to see what happens if we try to go to YouTube. So here's my sample YouTube clip. And it seems to be pretty sluggish getting a YouTube clip going. It takes a long time to buffer things and get working. But when it does get working, it seems to work pretty well. So hopefully this will eventually allow us to a full screen. Here we are, we're getting to a full screen. Hopefully we're in HD. Getting to this point was uh, painfully slow, but once we've got there, playback is, is fine. I wouldn't recommend a Rock Pi X as a YouTube playback device, but I have to admit, once you've gone through the process of getting a video playing, everything works uh, very nicely indeed. You can get decent HD playback streaming in a browser here on the, the Rock Pi X. But uh, the other thing I want to do, we just come out of uh, this, there we are, it's catching up with us. I want to run Passmark. So I've got a shortcut here to Passmark. So let's just run up Passmark 9. There we are, Passmark is now up and running, still trying to collect some information on temperatures for the hard disk and GPU. Don't think it's going to do that. But as you can see, the CPU is running at 57 degrees C. And it's worth noting the heatsink is doing its job. It's getting pretty warm, the heatsink, not untouchably warm, but it's certainly working, doing its job. So let's now run the Passmark tests, and there'll be various breaks, I'm sure, in the recording as we do this. Do we want to run all the tests? Yes, we do. And we'll speed on through. And here we are running some of the graphical tests. I'd note the test before this one was not recordable. There are various resolution changes go on during the Passmark process. But here we are with the floating jellyfish in space, which is achieving a about three and a half frames a second. This is a very strenuous test to be giving the poor little Rock Pi X. And here we are looking at some of those lovely shapes we see in the Passmark test. It's worth noting that the previous graphical test timed out, but this one's running perfectly well. And there we are, it's finished. We've got a final Past mark score of 659.4. And if we put this on a table of past mark scores from other x86 based single board computers that I compared in the video a few months back, you'll see this actually a pretty good result given the price of the Rock Pi X, because the score here is beating both the Latte Panda version 1.0 232 model, which sells for $89, and it's beating the score of 430 we got for the Latte Panda version 0. 464 model, which sells for $149. So this is a pretty good Windows performance, a pretty good Passmark rating for the Rock Pi X. So it's now the next day, and as you can see, I've installed Linux Mint 20 here on the Rock Pi X. And this was a far less time-consuming install and update than Windows 10. It took just over an hour to get this system all up and running on the, the Rock Pi X. And it's a nice responsive system. It runs a little bit faster than Windows. I guess we would expect that it's just a, 
not quite as heavy a distribution, heavy an operating system. The only problem I do have though, is as you might notice down here, I'm running here with a wired connection, which works perfectly well, because I can't get the Wi-Fi adapter working in Linux here on the RockPi X. What you cry, you can't get Wi-Fi working on a Linux distribution? That's never happened before in the history of the human race, has it? Well, it has. And even in Windows, I took about an hour to get the driver working for, for Wi-Fi, which I did get working in Windows. It's probably possible to get it working here in Linux. I just haven't got it working yet. And so that's why we're on a wired connection. And we've got a bit more space left on the system on our EMMC flash module in Linux, as you would expect. Let's just go to uh, this usage analyzer there. And you'll see that we've got 21 gig free on our 32 gigabyte EMMC. I didn't show you the comparable thing in Windows. We had about 11 gigabytes free in Windows after Windows had installed and updated. And indeed, when I chose my specification for the RockPi X, the model to get, I went for the four gig RAM, 32 gigabyte EMMC, very much thinking of doing Linux installs. Let's just run up a browser. Why not? We're here, might as well see if we can get online. Of course we can. Where are we going? Could you guess? There we are. But let's also go and do a YouTube clip again, just to show you streaming media playback here in uh, Linux. Again, it takes a little time to get going, but nowhere near as long as it did in Windows. And uh, let's just uh, make sure we're in HD. Oh, there we are. Um, no, we're not, we're in 720p. It's having a little think, but I uh, say so less of a think than it had in Windows. And hopefully in the second area, it's working. And you will see from the stats, it is dropping frames here quite considerably according to the stats, which it wasn't in Windows, although we got to this position much more easily. So it's not quite as good a playback. I think it's perfectly acceptable, but uh, there we are. I just thought you might like to see streaming media playback here in Firefox in a Linux Mint 20, as opposed to what was in Microsoft Edge in Windows. So uh, there we are. We've seen uh, Windows and Linux Mint 20 running on the Rock Pi X. As we've seen in this video, the Rock Pi X delivers on the promise of being an x86-based Raspberry Pi form factor single board computer sold for the lowest possible price. Now, whether you'd be better buying a Raspberry Pi or another ARM-based SBC rather than a Rock Pi X has to depend on what you want to do with the board. But certainly there are occasions where it's very useful to be able to run an x86-based operating system and applications on a small board. And it's those sort of situations the Rock Pi X is most suited for. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I hope to talk to you again very soon.